Hi, everyone. I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop, and today is Wednesday, October 30th, and just one more day, and it's Halloween. And Halloween is actually more than just a day of trick or treating, it's actually a meteorological holiday to some extent. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute called cross quarter days. Also, I want to talk about what's going on in the tropics. You know, we still have another full month of hurricane season uh, ongoing through the month of November. And this year it might even go into December. Officially, it ends on the night of November 30th. But I wouldn't put it past this year that we might see activity in the first couple of weeks of December. It's not out of the question. And also, we're going to talk about the warm weather conditions, uh, the El Nino going into La Nina. And what does that mean? It means, well, we could see a mild winter. And with that being said, we might be able to have a winter garden for some of us anyway. So we're going to talk about that as well. But right now, let's talk a little bit about trick or treat. Uh, this is the season of the end of October uh, that we go into Halloween. But Halloween uh, uh, goes way, way, way back into the time of the Druids and so forth. But anyway, Anyway, it was a, a time of uh, celebrating the end of summer. Yeah, end of summer. Summer actually ended on September 23rd this year, 22nd, 23rd, right around there. However, it doesn't really start cooling off, it seems, until like after Halloween. Anyway, there are these things called the quarter days. Take a look. Quarter days are, well, as you might expect, the four quarters of the year separated by the beginning of winter, spring, summer, and autumn, or some people call it fall. But between those seasons, you can throw a box in the circle here, you have what's known as cross quarter days. Instead of the quarter days, you have the cross of the quarters or the cross quarter days. And in those cross quarter days, you have four major ones. Of course, the big one that we're thinking about right now is Halloween. That's on October 31st. Also sometimes called Samhain or San, uh, uh, Samhain, but usually, usually pronounced Samhain, Samhain rather. And then you have um, uh, the summer end uh, that's that's the end of um, the summer is October 31st, basically in this definition. Uh, and then the other famous uh, cross quarter day is February 2nd. That's Groundhog Day, also known as Candlemas or Imbloc, um, and Imbach. And also you have May 1st, well May Day, also known as uh, uh, Belkane also known as Belkane. And then the other one, not so famous, the Feast of Lamas or August 1st, the Feast of Loafs. Uh, anyway, those are the four cross-quarter days. Two very famous ones and two not so uh, noticeable, but of course, Halloween. And then again, Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day is one of my favorite. Now, for the portion of the world uh, here in southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina, uh, in between Halloween and Groundhog Day uh, is a good time for gardening. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit later. Well, let's talk about the tropics. What is going on in the tropics? Well, what we have going on right now is an area of disturbed weather over here in the Caribbean Sea. Again, part of that broad circulation called the Central America Gyre. And uh, it's a broad area of low pressure uh, over in the Western and Central Caribbean Sea into Central America. And within that area, we start seeing development. And here's right here, we have a 40% probability of something developing over the next five to seven days. Uh, and we're keeping an eye on that. But let's take a look at the now, first of all, the satellite imagery, not seeing much going on. Uh, we're seeing some clouds in the Gulf of Mexico, absolutely no uh, organization whatsoever. We have those fair weather cumulus clouds flowing across Georgia and South Carolina this afternoon. We'll probably see the same thing again for tomorrow. And over here in the Western and Central Caribbean Sea, we are seeing a little bit of development going on, but still nothing organized right now. And the computer models say nothing is really going to get organized for the, the next few days anyway. Here we are looking at the GFS model and uh, it shows that the area in the Western and Central Caribbean Sea is trying to get organized. You can see something uh, trying to pop up over here in the Central Caribbean around Jamaica. There's Jamaica right there. And uh, let's put this continuation into motion. This is, by the way, 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon. Actually, 1 o'clock Sunday afternoon. That's another thing we need to talk about. Daylight saving time ends uh, Saturday night into Sunday morning. We gain an hour of sleep. Uh, anyway, let's move on. And looking at the computer models again, 
it has this system meandering around in the North Central uh, Caribbean Sea around the eastern portions of Cuba, which they really don't need another storm. Uh, and then you have over here in the Puerto Rico, in the, um, oh, there's Puerto Rico over here, over, over here in Hispaniola and the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Uh, and then another area trying to develop over here in the Straits of Yucatan. All right, this is now into uh, sunrise on Wednesday. And then going on into time, we're starting to see something trying to develop over here in the Straits of Yucatan. Again, now we're out to Friday, a week from Halloween, a week from to, uh, uh, November 1st. So this is now November uh, 8th. And uh, still, it looks like a somewhat of a, a medium to small size hurricane could develop in the Gulf of Mexico. And then moving on after that. All right, let's take a look at another model. Uh, the ICON model shows uh, something trying to develop there again in the s western and central uh, Caribbean Sea and then moving toward the Straits of Yucatan as a hurricane. Uh, this now only goes out to uh, 180 hours. So this is uh, sunset on Wednesday. All right, let's look at the Canadian model, see what it has to say for itself. And the CMC, Canadian Meteorological Center. And it shows, again, something trying to develop in the Caribbean Sea and moves to the northwest right through the Straits of Yucatan into the southern Gulf of Mexico. And then, whoa, it turns. It starts beginning to turn to the north and then toward the north. Uh, east. <laughs> That's not a good sign. That puts it toward Florida and into southeastern Georgia and southeast South Carolina. So <laughs> we don't want to uh, have something like this developing uh, in the early portions of November. This is already now uh, sunrise on Saturday, November 9th. So we're keeping an eye on that. Has the um, European model come in? I don't think it has. Let's just take a peek over here. No, it's still the uh, 2 a.m. morning run. So uh, let's go to the um, quick, uh, fast mode of the ECMWF European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast. And again, I'm not seeing much going on out here, but then it's trying to develop something over here, hints of development again same place in the Straits of Yucatan. So keeping an eye on that. And uh, the, it just bounces around out there. So nothing firm yet developing in the uh, tropical Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, but there are hints that something could develop. What's the next name on the list? I think it's Patty. And I think Raphael is the next one after that. All right. Um, hmm. Okay, let's take a look at something else. What is the energy levels associated with the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico? Remember back in the summer, August, September, and early October, when we had uh, Debbie, we had, uh, um, who are these other two guys? Helene and, 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 and um, Milton. Uh, temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico were in the upper 80s at that time, around flirting with 90 degrees. Uh, now these values here, here we are, 26, 27 degrees Celsius. That's about 80 degrees, right around 80 degrees, upper 70s, lower 80s. Now uh, you get to the southern Gulf of Mexico where that deep water and loop current exist. Uh, there you still see temperatures in the mid to upper 80s. And then over here in the Caribbean Sea, there is a lot of energy to tap into. The water temperature is still very warm in the upper 80s, flirting with 90 degrees, but mostly in the mid to upper 80s out here in the entire Caribbean. See, so a lot of energy there to work with. All right, let's take a look at another sea surface temperature map and more of a global uh, map. And this is what we call the anom anomalies, the, uh, the difference from what is normal. And that's where we start seeing what's called El Nino, uh, neutral period, and uh, La Nina. And we just passed through the El Nino last year and we're in a neutral period uh, throughout most of the summertime. And then now we're seeing cooler waters off here in the uh, tropical Pacific Ocean off the coast of Peru into the Central Pacific Ocean. When you see that, that's known as La Nina, uh, the cooler waters. And that causes uh, the uh, jet stream to dry up in the tropical Caribbean and tropical Atlantic Ocean. It also means mild and dry winters for much of the Southern United States. And much of the United States in general will have generally a mild winter. So with that being said, let's take a look at the forecast for the winter months around, uh, well, the, the uh, U.S. And for the month of November, it looks like most of the country will be near normal to above normal probabilities of above 
abnormal are quite high in the central plains uh, down into the southern and mid-Mississippi River Valley. At December, uh, even more so, uh, uh, higher values of above normal temperature values expected into the um, upper uh, Midwest, into the upper plains, and uh, up into the northern plains. And much of the country uh, is above normal or much above normal probabilities for temperatures for the uh, month of December and going into January. We're always starting to see a little bit cool down off to the north, going back to what's normal. Normal, you know, is cold uh, for the northern states. But here in the southeast and south central portion of the country, we're seeing temperatures still to average above the normal. Now, during the month of uh, January, normal high in the Savannah area is 59 degrees. Normal low is 39, I think it is. It used to be 38. Uh, anyway, it might be even 40 now. But uh, uh, this is forecasting to be above that. So uh, it looks like a mild January, relatively speaking, coming in. And then February, well, <laughs> chances of above normal temperatures, again, are relatively high for the month of February and going into March. So the winter is looking quite mild for the Southeast United States. What about rainfall? Well, you know, we definitely could use some rain. Uh, we don't want to dry out, but unfortunately we have no say in that. And here we go for the month of November. It looks like near normal to below normal. And November is not a very wet month to begin with uh, here in the Southeast. December, again, below normal. Uh, excuse me, yeah, below normal right here. Uh, this is precipitation. And then for January, uh, again, eh, close to normal. January is about a three and a half to four inches of normal, uh, is normal rainfall for the entire month uh, in southeastern Georgia. Again, for February, about normal rainfall conditions. And then going into March, same thing, about normal. And then April, looks like we're starting uh, chances of getting more precipitation. In April, uh, is a little bit more in uh, rainfall totals, about four to five inches is normal for the month of April, closer to four inches, not to five inches. But anyway, uh, that's what the winter is looking like. So with a mild and dry winter, again, it could be good for gardening. So let's go out to my garden. I'm out here in my winter garden. I started these plants uh, in mid to late September, growing all through the month of October now, and these will be ready, perhaps some of the cauliflower and broccoli, uh, ready by Thanksgiving, if not certainly by Christmas. What I have over here is I have, on this side I have cauliflower, this side I have broccoli, I have six plants each. I have them in raised gardens, and I also have some hay on here to help mulch them uh, to keep the moisture in. On this side over here I have all cauliflower, 12 cauliflower plants. Candid Charm is my favorite cauliflower plant to grow this time of the year, and Green Comet is the broccoli that I'm growing. And over here, you know, I've been trying to grow Brussels sprouts forever, it seems like. Uh, three years ago I started in the uh, uh, around Valentine's Day, middle of February. And then the year before that, I, or after that, I started them in late January because they were not maturing before the heat came. Uh, it seems like these take about five to six months to mature. Uh, well, they still didn't make it. So this year, I'm planting them now in late October, and I have them already uh, from the six packs I bought at Hester and Zipperer. Uh, I'm gonna plant those. I have them in the ground now. Hopefully they'll make it through the winter with no issues. And that's one thing nice about the cold crops, the uh, cauliflower, cabbage, uh, Brussels sprouts, uh, and, and broccoli. They don't really mind the cold weather. As a matter of fact, they like it cool. Uh, and a little bit on the cold side as well. A lot of these plants could take it down to about 28 degrees with no issues whatsoever. Uh, maybe a little bit of scarring on the leaves, but no, you know, no big deal. Uh, so the winter is looking like it's going to be a mild one across particularly coastal Georgia, southern South Carolina, and over into extreme South Georgia. Uh, if you're in these areas, you've got a high probability that growing this winter a garden will be beneficial. Uh, you should be able to do it this year. It's going to be mild and uh, on the dry side. You, you're going to have to irrigate somewhat. Also, uh, if you feel very optimistic, you can try growing some patio tomatoes. You know those little cherry tomatoes? They're wonderful on salads just to pop in your mouth for a snack. You can grow those in pots on your patio. Uh, I would not suggest planting them in the ground. I would suggest planting them in large pots so that in the event you get a a freeze or a frost on the way, 
uh, you can cover them up or take them into an environment where it's protected. Like, for example, if you have a garage or if you have a greenhouse, obviously, uh, you can put it in there to protect them. Uh, another uh, uh, vegetable that grows well in the cool weather, carrots. Radishes too, I don't like radishes, but carrots. Carrots, you know, they take about, gosh, four to five months to mature. So I planted some carrots uh, about a week ago and they're just becoming, uh, just coming out of the ground now. And carrots love cool weather. They don't like the heat. Just the same thing with the broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. They don't like the heat at all. Uh, the carrots will do fine in the cool weather. As a matter of fact, it can even snow on top of carrots and they'll still grow well because most of their uh, action is underground. And all you have to do is mulch them just a little bit. And then come uh, mid-spring, you should be able to pull out some nice, long, fresh, yummy carrots. All right. Now over here, I do have my Brussels sprouts on the back row here, but in the other region, it's still vacant because I'm waiting on a shipment of broccolini. Yeah, broccolini. That's a cross between broccoli and cauliflower. And if you like either cauliflower or broccoli, you'll love uh, broccolini. And I'm, I'm getting these over at Hester and Zipper. Uh, they, they planted them specially for me and for you if you would like to go get them as well. And they love the cool weather, just like their cousins, uh, the broccoli and the cauliflower and the cabbage and the, uh, what else you have? Uh, Brussels sprouts, yeah. And collards, uh, another good time of the year to plant collards as well. You know, collards, I'm not a fan of collards, but I do know that uh, after they mature, if you get a frost or a light freeze, it sweetens them up. So the cool weather, again, beneficial to grow these type of crops for your winter garden. So have at it. Let's go back inside. All right. Yeah, I'm having fun out in the garden, and I have to irrigate, though, because we've had hardly any rain whatsoever. We've only had, um, I've only had seven, eight hundredths of an inch of rain for the entire month of October so far. The National Weather Service uh, rain gauge over at uh, the airport has only received six hundredths of an inch, eight hundredths of an inch, six hundredths fell yesterday. Uh, so, you know, it's been a very dry October. One of the things we need to be cautious about with the dry, warm weather is the fields are going to be drying out. And um, I remember several years ago, we had a lot of forest fires and brush fires across southeastern Georgia, south, and central and southern Georgia, and into uh, South Carolina. We might have to deal with that once again this spring unless we get some rain. But right now, the indicators are that it's going to be dry. So there's a high probability that we'll start inhaling smoke again uh, in the uh, late winter and spring months around here. So be extra cautious if you're outside doing any kind of burning activities, particularly late winter and early spring. All right, looking at the conditions on my webpage, Pat's uh, Weather and Nature page, uh, savannahpat.name is my website. Uh, a little note there, my um, um, weather station, the thermistor blew out uh, during one of the hurricanes. Uh, I think it was um, uh, Helene. Anyway, I just got the replacement part back today. I just installed it and testing it right now, so it's working once again. But anyway, there is a forecast for the next several days. It's going to be much above normal. Normal highs in the lower 70s right now. Normal low uh, is in the um, lower 50s. Uh, right now we're seeing forecasting, I'm forecasting highs in the lower 80s, lows in the middle 60s. That's well above normal for this time of the year. And that's for at least the next seven days. And then again, as we just saw on the six week outlook anyway, the winter outlook, and in the short term, the six week outlook, uh, calling for temperatures to be much above normal to above normal to slightly above normal. Every week for the next six weeks will be at least above normal and rainfall all through the period nor below normal for our area so it's going to be mild and dry all right well thanks for watching and i uh, hope you have some fun trick-or-treating it's going to be a warm trick-or-treat halloween this year and uh, seems like the last several years has been warm part of the problems here in my area are the gnats anyway i love seeing the children coming in in their costumes so with that being said happy halloween everybody see you later bye